Hey guys, tonight I have a story about a haunted hotel and a family that goes there. Pretty scary story. And we're going to be doing a night tour of Carson City, Nevada. That's next. All right, here we are. Okay, so we are in my backyard tonight. And this is kind of fun. It's fun for me. I love my camping, obviously. But this is where we're doing our scary story tonight. And I also have a beer. I have a Fog Cutter Double IPA, and that is from the Lost Coast Brewery in Northern California. And we're gonna crack that guy open right now. It was cooled in the fridge. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is a pretty strong beer. It's a double IPA. Got some kick to it. So our story takes place on the other side of the mountain, the Sierra Nevada here. I'm in Carson City. We just did our tour. That was kind of fun. In a small town, 699 people called Mocha Lumna Hill. It's in Calaveras County. Really uh, an old gold mining town still in existence still people living there obviously it's kind of like virginia city up here it really hangs on to its history the history was in the 1830s there was french trappers that were living in this valley 1848 they found gold over there during the gold boom on that side of the sierra nevada in california 1850, they got a post office. 1851, they were established as the county seat of Calaveras County. Calaveras County is also um, the county where Mark Twain did a celebrated story about a jumping frog contest, <laughs> a short story in Calaveras County. The jumping frog of Calaveras County. <sighs> we'll, have to, we'll have to read that some night. And this town, had hit it really big with the gold. Uh, people from all over the world came here to strike it rich, and it turned out it was one of the richest gold towns in California, at least at that time. Built many hotels and saloons, bars, businesses. Many of them have since disappeared. But one of them that's still in existence is the Leaguer Hotel from 1851. I believe it burned down a couple of times. And they rebuilt it. That happened a lot. Virginia City in 1875 had a fire that swept through and took out a big chunk of the town. And they rebuilt. Um, with all the wood and something happens in one building, it just quickly spreads. So this Leaguer Hotel apparently is very haunted. Back in the old days, a pretty rowdy time in our history in the West with the miners and the frontier, people were getting killed and 
prostitution, a lot of different things that happen in these old hotels. And over the years, there was many stories about different hauntings of this old hotel. Even to this day, and I, I got a story here. Um, really, it's still in operation. They have fine dining, really nice saloon, really nice rooms. Um, it's just, it's, it's haunted. <laughs> so in 2006, there was a lady named Anna, and she made a trip to California, and they decided to go to Okalumna Hill and go to the Leaguer Hotel. So she went with her mom and her aunt and uncle and her cousin. There was five of them. They check into this hotel, and as they were going up the stairs, they had two dogs with them. The dogs were frightened. They did not want to go up the stairs. They were freaked out. They didn't know why. So they picked the dogs up, the mom and Anna, picked up the dogs, and the dogs were desperately trying to wiggle out of the arms of the mom and the daughter. So they carried them up to the room, got into the room, and they had two rooms, room 11 and 12. They were adjacent rooms. The aunt and uncle were going to stay in one. Anna, her cousin, and her mom were going to stay in the other. Put the dogs down once they got in the room, checking out the rooms, trying to get settled, get their suitcases, you know, get the clothes out and all that. And the dogs, both of them went into the bathroom and started yelping, crying. And so Anna ran into the bathroom as quick as she could. And one of the dogs peed on the floor and was just running in circles right in the bathroom. And the dogs never did this, not at home. They just, they would always wait and then go, even after many hours, let alone just a few minutes. So it was very surprising for her that the dogs would do this. Finally, the dogs settled down and they got ready and they went downstairs to have dinner in the restaurant slash saloon. Again, really nice uh, dining. I checked their menu, really good looking food and stuff. And they had a nice dinner, enjoyed, enjoyed themselves, went back up. And as they were going back up, Anna noticed she had this feeling that somebody was staring at her. And it wasn't her family, it wasn't her aunt and uncle, her, her mom or her cousin. It was, she just had this feeling as they were, she was going up the stairs and down the hall. It was just a weird feeling. So they go into the room, get ready for bed, get settled in for the night, start shutting it down. And the mom is on one bed and there's a dresser in between and she's sleeping in the next bed with her cousin. The aunt and uncle are in the adjacent room. They close the door obviously. And they had blue pillows with white sheets, just FYI. They fall asleep, everyone's sleeping, Anna's half asleep. She's laying there for about an hour, this was after 11 o'clock, and she hears some walking around the room, not outside the room, but in the room. And she's half asleep, and she sits up, and then lays back down, and then she hears it again, walking around the room. And she knows for a fact that her mom is in the other bed. Now she can see her, partially see her, because the dresser is in the way. And her cousin is right next to her. And she can hear walking. And she's pretty, pretty concerned. She's half asleep, though. And so she's thinking, maybe... I'm kind of imagining it. So she dismisses it. And she's laying there and she's falling back asleep. And about 10 minutes later, she's laying on her back, 
cousin's right next to her. She can, she knows, she knows it for a fact. Mom's next to her over here, and she feels the sheets pulling slowly down towards her feet, and she she can just feel this chill coming over her neck and her her head and her whole body, just kind of like what is happening and she's feeling it pull down and she decides to pull it back up and as soon as she pulls it back up she feels like someone pulled it really fast and she panicked she absolutely panicked because she knew her cousin was right next to her and she sat up and she screamed as loud as she could she was just so afraid the mom got up turned on the light came over to see what was going on. The cousin sat up, was half asleep, and was like, not sure what was going on. The mom was like, are you okay? What's, what's happening? Are you all right? And she says, somebody pulled my sheet down. When I pulled it up, they pulled it really hard. And the mom didn't know anything about the footsteps or the feeling of being watched. And so she was like, okay, well, there's no one here. Lights are on, there's obviously no one here. I think we're gonna be okay. And so she, they turn out the lights and everyone falls back asleep except Anna again. This time she's really afraid. And then she hears more things during the night. Here's some bumps, knocks on the door, just real subtle things, but she can hear them. She clearly can hear them around the room. And at this point, she's pretty much in pure fear. And then she heard some slow walking around the bed. It's just it's like a shuffling, slow walking on the wood floor and she didn't she was just so afraid she couldn't even scream she just went under the covers and was just kind of riding the night out really not sure what to expect but this whole thing about a haunted hotel was just actualized for Anna even though she had her mom in the next bed and her cousin here and her aunt and uncle in the next room they're all sound asleep and it's dark. And, and I know that feeling of just, you're just fearful and you just don't even want to move, let alone make sounds and stuff. So she was just trying to get through the night. Then she heard something under the bed, just some, just some slight movement. Wasn't sure what that was. Finally just fell asleep six o'clock comes around everyone's getting up and they noticed in the bedroom where the mom and Anna were in the cousin there was two pillows missing two blue pillows and there was a, two extra pillows that they had set on a chair in the room there And they looked everywhere. They looked under the bed, they looked in the closet, behind the furniture, and they couldn't find it. So Anna said, I gotta go downstairs and talk to the staff and let them know because they're, they're gonna throw charges for this, but I don't know what happened to these pillows. So she goes down the hall, down the stairs in this old hotel, talks to the staff and says, we woke up this morning, two of our pillows were missing kind of a weird thing it's just their pillows but they're big you know it's not like it's a pencil or something so the staff comes up they look check out the room nothing in the room they they confirmed it yeah there's nothing here so they go down and they go room to room and start searching to see if maybe it's in another room or in the hallway or something turns out it was in an unoccupied room down the hall it was locked, the room was locked, and these two pillows were placed on the bed in that room down the hall. They also found a 
blanket that Anna didn't know was missing from their room, but there was a blanket there as well. It was on the bed, folded up nice and neat, sitting right in front of the pillows. And the staff thought, that was that's really strange. It was locked. How did they get in? Nobody could get in there. To... And then Anna and her mom thought, that was really strange. <laughs> Our pillows disappeared on us. So they went and got the breakfast and kind of finished out their morning. And as they were packing, the cousin had this educational computer toy. Kind of like a speak and spell. I, I remember a speak and spell from the 80s, 70s. Um, and this thing was not working the day before. It just, the cousin was trying to play with it and it wasn't working. So Anna thought the battery wasn't working. So they, okay, well, it's not working. As they were packing it, this thing, this computer toy, started doing its pre-programmed voice came on. And it was doing its educational routine and whatever it does with the, you know, kind of merriment and jolly and fun and, and creepy at the same time, kind of like clowns, you know, it's creepy. And they're like, they couldn't stop it. This thing wouldn't stop. It was just, it just kept going. It just kept going. So they frantically were like, how do we, they couldn't turn it off. They couldn't stop it. And so they flipped it over and opened up the door and pulled the battery out and they finally got it to stop. They were like, geez, just one more thing added on top of this strange night, scary night that Anna had. And so they got everything packed, they went home, left the Leaguer Hotel, and they checked their phones, cell phones, and the photos that they'd taken. And on some of the photos, they found, they saw these little orbs, these little lights. I, I don't know much about them, but I guess they're called orbs. They're like these little spirits that fly around or something. I don't know much about them, but orbs. And in two of the photos, they saw faces, like in the background. One of them was on a mirror. They clearly saw a face of like an old woman. Just this faint reflection in a mirror while they were taking randomly taking pictures. And they knew at this point, especially after spending this night in this hotel, that they had stayed in a truly haunted hotel in California. That is my story for tonight. And we're going to do more scary stories. This is a lot of fun, you guys. Um, and I got some more scary stories from this Leaguer Hotel, too. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty cool place. Pretty scary place at the same time. <laughs> so, hey, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. I love your comments. Great community that we have. You guys are great. And uh, we will see you on the next one. And as always, keep hiking. Keep hiking. I am watching you.